you gave a perspective on installment, but then what about something that we specifically have in Genesis 1, 26 and 27 that talks about the image of God? I have a question here, MC. We are back to the cards. Uh, if we're evolved, then when did the image of God become part of human experience? God created us in his image. So if we're, if we're going with, with what you said, and we don't know about insolment, but we at least know about image of God. So when did that happen? So the first thing to clarify is what do we mean when we say God created us in his image? Because creation doesn't have to do primarily, uh, as John said, with, with bringing a material into being. It can be setting up an institution. It can be, in this case, I believe, calling humanity to a, to a vocation. The image of God is functional. Long before I ever read John, I always, I always believed the image of God was functional. He gave me more categories to see that there's a, a wider pattern there, that everything is functional in Genesis 1. So the, the purpose of the human race is the same purpose an image in a temple has. The, the ancients believed that God, the gods lived in the heavens, above this earthly realm, transcendent, and you set up a temple, and in the, in the deep recesses of a room in the back that nobody but priests had access to, there was a big statue called an image. That image was how the God became present to the temple worshipers. Well, how does the Lord who reigns in heaven, whose throne is in heaven, a standard Old Testament motif, how is he present on earth in the cosmic temple? He's present through his human image who are called upon to represent him adequately. This is a priestly task. It is also a royal task. The royal and priestly are always connected in the ancient conceptuality. So Israel is to be a royal priesthood representing God to the nations as humanity is to represent God on earth by all of our endeavors. We live before God's face. Everything we do is religion. Everything we do is meant to be sacred in the positive sense of holiness and not corruption, which is the negative sense of sacredness. So that is a human task. So Imago Dei is a purpose, a mission, a calling, a vocation. The question then comes, which human beings, when, were given that task for the first time? That's a question that concordists want to ask. How do you relate this? And I know of good um, Christian scholars, who are not theologians, because most theologians don't want to speculate, but some scientists want to speculate. And I've heard scientists say, well, somewhere along the development of Homo sapiens, God called out some of them or maybe two of them and called them to represent the rest as his image in the world. I've also heard people say, no, 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 you got to go. See, Homo sapiens are not the only humans. Neanderthals are humans too. And Homo florensis are humans too. There are lots of different humans. So maybe the first humans, is that Erectus? I've heard people say maybe Erectus is when God mm -hmm. called uh, the first hominins to mm -hmm. represent him. And that's long ago. How, how can you know this? <laughs> there are two different discourses. Let's mm -hmm. scientists study the science and we say whenever God did that, we now know that we are made in God's image and called to represent God with priestly tasks in this world. Mm -hmm. And so if I, try to, if I try to tie this together and say that somehow we've got a, a hominid bush that's growing up and when at a certain particular point in time, maybe one or two of those hominids becomes uh, morally uh, culpable and spiritually capable that God lifts them out.